Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And this is the Watchathon of Rassilon. Today we're going to be talking about an app. Ep- oh man, what's the Dalek name? Dalek Invasion waited- of Earth. <laughs> we waited for you to pull this information up, and now the time has come, and you're not prepared. I'm not. I, I couldn't remember the name of the actual serial. But today we're talking about the Dalek Invasion of Earth, this second serial of season two of The First Doctor. That's a mouthful. It's six episodes, World's End, The Daleks, Day of Reckoning, The End of Tomorrow, The Waking Ally, and Flashpoint, which aired from November 21st, 1964 to December 26th, 1964. And now that I've got that out of the way, I feel better. I know you... crap. (laughs) I didn't listen to any of that. I don't think anybody does, and I'm probably just That's how we're still, like, tuning listeners. in and getting used to listening. <laughs> like, yeah. We don't even know this. By the way, we have a new guest today. Hello. And it's the Magnificent Jez. Jez, yes. would you okay. like to... You are... <laughs> just call him Magnificent Jez from now on. That is her official title. Everyone, please be sure to address her as such. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Jez. On Tumblr, I am Typeset Jez. And I also co-run How to Grow the Fuck Up. I am a public librarian, so master of libraries, and I'm an internet wizard. Official internet wizard. And you're a random person. This is true. I've been in Joe's videos, as everyone Joe knows has been. Yes. (laughs) As everyone we know gets roped up. You were, somehow at some point just by saying there. hello you were automatically put on his list of people to film pretty much well mostly you've been audio you were right. a random person who and i'm I, still audio so people yeah. don't know if i have a body or not well you, you, you danced once in one of my um, videos yeah you you used the worst part of it <laughs> did i <laughs> oh. well i did like actual dancing and i'm like i'm gonna send you ballet dancing there was some joke attached to it and then you just put in the ballet dance So with all of our other guests, we've had them kind of go through and kind of give us an idea of their experience with Doctor Who. So I started with The Ninth Doctor, and I've watched all of New Who, and then I decided I was going to go back and watch Old Who. And at that point, it was only really available on Netflix, and Netflix didn't really have much available. They just kind of picked and choose what episodes they were going to offer. So I watched The Aztecs was my first episode. Oh, what a great first episode. It's a good one, and I loved Barbara. Yeah. And then, but I had no idea who any of these characters were, because it doesn't start you at the beginning. I can see that. And then I moved on to the second Doctor, and it was the Mind Robber. And then I watched the third Doctor, which was Spearhead from Space, and I loved the third Doctor, and I just kept going from there. So I've seen like a season worth of the third Doctor. For some reason, I decided I was going to watch all, all of the Doctor's regenerations, like every single episode. At some point, I just got to four, and like kept watching all through five. Like, yes, this is... This is an era that I like. <laughs> That's what I did with the third Doctor. I'm like, I really like this version. And maybe that was because I was just starting with him. I got the first episode. I'm like, okay, let's just keep going. But it was becoming very hard for me to find them, so I took a break. And now they're available on Hulu, and I'm just going through them. And I'm like half a season ahead of you, I think. Nice. Yes. So not too far. you back from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. From an so, unearthly child. But you rewatch this episode for us. And yes. Let's talk about it. You know yeah. all of the things. Wait, how much new who have you seen? I don't think you said that. I did. I said at the beginning. Yeah, she, all of she definitely oh, okay. said it. I, was, I don't know. I was more worried about you, you not were facing the mic. Really worried about the dates <laughs> and uh, no one cares the about details that. and uh, I don't know other things I, that you say know. at the beginning it's of the like podcast. I never listen. I don't know. I feel like weird if we don't do it. I don't know. It's like a no, thing. No, it's your I have thing. It's your thing. That's how you start the podcast, and then you tell I, us. You're like you kind of set the structure, and I knock it down. Yeah, I realize as I'm saying it how boring it is, but I can't <laughs> not do it every episode. You're yeah. also like really trying to rush through it and say it all at once. Yeah, <laughs> because you because I know how knows. boring it is. It's like I just got to get through it. I just gotta, I gotta get through this boring stuff because I have to say it. So the episode. Uh. The serial. Uh, the first episode. Oh. Of the Dalek invasion of Earth is World's End. Which, uh, not to be confused with 
either the Edgar Wright movie or the Seth Rogen End of the World movie. This is Doctor Who. You're watching, this or you're better. listening to a podcast about Doctor Who. Though all three do share a sort of post-apocalyptic thing, and two of them have robots. Well, it's the world's end. I'm... <laughs> that's kind of an expectation that's being set. Yeah. But two, two of the three do have robots. Robo men, technically. I love um, the robo. Let's, let's get there. <laughs> well, that's let's how get there because I love the robo men so. Oh, no, hold much. on. We have to start with the TARDIS materializing and there being a sign under the bridge that just says "Do not dump dead bodies," and they're all like. Okay, that's normal. It and takes they move on. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, it, we we start with this this guy in a helmet who freaks out and can't read the sign and dumps his own body in the oh, river. Yeah. yeah, he does not follow the rules whatsoever. He just throws himself into the river like the rebel that he is, which Su- is suicide count. I don't know, like three. Let's no, see, Tagana. We're kill- like seven. We're not at <laughs> seven for suicides. We're yeah, we're higher than you think. Well, there was the the guy who cut the rope in Daleks. Mm-hmm, in Daleks. There was Tagana. Yes, there was yes. the oh, guy the, in Aztecs. Yeah, the sacrificial. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. There may have been two in the Aztecs. There's the dude that jumped off the building, and then the last dude just sort of gave himself up. It wasn't. It was more like an assisted suicide. <laughs> I mean, it was human it sacrifice, was but terribly doing it. There, yeah. I, I, it was voluntary. I think murder. we're missing one. But whatever, we're at like five. We're at like at, at least. least five. Which is closer to the seven than it is to three. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really not. Awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the exact same. It's, it's exactly the All same. All right, we're going to split the difference and we're going to say it's five. <laughs> <laughs> It is right. equidistant. <laughs> okay, so here's another thing. The, the, the TARDIS shows out, uh, materializes, and they're like looking at the monitor to see what's outside. But wasn't the monitor broke? How did it get <laughs> it It's organic and it fixed itself. It's space-timey. It w- but it was like a plot point in the cliffhanger last, the last episode, that it was broken, wasn't showing anything. And now it's like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Looks like Earth. It's probably Earth. So they get out to be like, yeah, it looks an awful lot like Earth, smells like Earth, tastes like Earth. This is another thing that I like here is, Ian has done this a few times now, where he's just like joking about, oh, we, you know, we're on Earth, who cares if it's a century or so off? Like, this is as accurate as we're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe we should just stick around. But you haven't actually brought us to Earth in a time where we're not like at war yet. <laughs> yeah. And he still doesn't. <laughs> no. The, well, the one not. time he brought him to Earth and it wasn't at war... They were super fucking tiny. <laughs> they were so small. They were so small. Can we talk about that episode? <laughs> okay, well let's go. Wait, let's they go through so how small. many times they've been on Earth. Cavemen. I, I mean, Aztecs. Aztecs. Marco Polo. Tiny. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Planet ac- Giants. Accidentally at the beginning of the universe. Mm-hmm. And now, the oh, wait, wait, the French Revolution. The French Revolution. And now the future. And now the future. The doctor just cannot hone in on the right time. But don't, for the love of God, don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> or he will kick you off the ship. Did I miss yeah. any? Did yeah. I miss I, any Earth? I think we got him. None of them are the right names, but you got them. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't call any of them right. So, but they land and they're exploring and there's this, the poster, by the way, is not like this small detail. It's huge poster. They're underneath this bridge. And I, I swear the episode goes on for like, I don't know, it's halfway done before one of them goes, look at that poster. I don't think we're, I don't think we're in the right time. That looks kind of weird, right? <laughs> like, I, I like their like. He's like, look how weird this is. And Doctor's like, oh, how quaint. And he walks away. <laughs> the Doctor's like, that is a stupid place for a poster. <laughs> he's like, who's going to see this under a bridge? <laughs> That's what he says. He's and, offended by the placing of the poster. And I like, like, they, they first get out and they're like, wow, it's really quiet. There's nothing going on. Must be Sunday. That's <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> literally Ian's like, it's Sunday. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Must be dead. <laughs> Checked at Fair Pulse. Couldn't find one. Must be Sunday. <laughs> And then Susan is like trying to cr- climb up to the bridge and to to see what there is to be seen, and um, starts a theme of people hurting their their feet or ankles. And she yeah. she actually pulls the bridge down onto the TARDIS because uh, we have to have a way to not get there's into the a TARDIS. Scene, yeah. There's a scene where I mean, like the fall is kind of dramatic, and you just kind of hear Ian in the background go, oh, "Susan." <laughs> Like, that's where they are now, though. Like, they're just like every episode. <laughs> Which, when we get to the end, maybe they're just I'm... like, let's go. No! <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I have opinions about this. And that's I, well, part of what I've read. You want me to wait? Yeah, till okay. the end of the episode. Fine. Because we're going to spoil it for the listeners. <laughs> Who, 
Even though was, we're telling them exactly what happened. No, the, the whole point of this is to tell them what's happening because they're not going to watch it. Or they <laughs> are and they want to know what we think. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why anyone is listening, actually. I <laughs> listen because I listen to it at work now. And it's like, hey, my friends are here talking to me about something I care about. <gasps> But then I get upset that I can't talk back. So that's why I'm here. I feel all the way to Chattanooga for this. <laughs> oh, right. We should probably say that. Yeah. Yeah. Jez, Jez is physically us. here in Meat Space. She's and... the first guest we've ever had in Meat Space. Yeah. And which I is very cool. for this. This better be good. Oh, God. Well, it's entirely on your shoulders. Yeah, no. Okay. it's This is up to you. We're not piloting this ship. <laughs> You're the guest. You have to be special. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> things we were talking about. The bridge falls. Yeah, the bridge falls on the TARDIS. They can't get back inside. Susan hurts her ankle and everyone's pissed about it. Like, I damn feel bad. it, Susan. I don't. <laughs> like, I... She's so overdramatic about it. They're like, oh, can you walk? And it's like... Okay, I have twisted my ankle so many times, and I can walk, and she, like, falls doesn't even take his over. She just completely falls over, and I'm like, god damn it, Susan. To be oh, fair, I think Ian did the exact same thing in the, the Daleks, the first Daleks. Yeah. yeah. Which, they, by the way, this is the first returning villain. Uh, yeah. The Daleks are the first return. I mean, we're not to the Daleks yet, but... It's called the Dalek <laughs> Invasion. We know. Of no spoilers here. It's in the title. If you don't know, you weren't paying attention... Why were you paying attention? But I mean, to be fair, the people watching it when it originally aired just thought it was World's End. They didn't know about the Daleks. Because mm-hmm. yeah. like, it's actually sometimes referred to, the entire series was referred, referred to, to as, as World's, World's End. End. That must be kind of exciting the first time. Like, oh, the Daleks are back. I remember I the Daleks. <laughs> we know them. Because it is legitimately scary when, like, you see the Dalek for the first time. But I'll, what else happened? I mean, does anything else happen in this episode? Or can I talk about well, it? Well, we'll, we'll get to I it. Um, okay. I have Action Ian here. I don't remember <laughs> what he did. But you wanted to I, jiff it. Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to need an acetylene torch. Or he's like, or maybe oh, yeah. I can find a crowbar. And the doctor's like... He points to this random warehouse, like, across the river. And he's like, we need to move this junk. So yeah. I'm going to go to that warehouse. I'm going to find us a crowbar and a blowtorch. And the doctor's and... like, you're not going to move it with a crowbar. And he's like, watch me. Yes. <laughs> so they go into the... Uh, before that, I have a note here that says the doc says... The doc's, like, Don't chastising... Huh? Don't call me Doc. That's a big thing in this. Sorry. <laughs> yes, the it is. Doctor. Someone calls him Doc, and he's like, I don't like, like that. Multiple times, he gets so mad. <laughs> the, the Doctor, excuse me, was like chastising Susan for twisting her ankle and literally, I don't know Pulling if that's why he was. the bridge down. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because they, he's they're like, stuck now. Says something about spanking her bottom. Oh, yeah. Yes! And it was, first of all, I'm really uncomfortable with a lot of things that happen with Susan because I have no idea how old she is. Like, sometimes the show treats, how old is she? I think she's 15. 15? I didn't know about something in that. Well, maybe she's 16 by now. Because I keep thinking, things keep happening with Susan that are kind of creepy, and it's like, sometimes it's because she's too old, and sometimes it's because she's too young. And every time you're like, how old is Susan again? Because she was in school when this started, and you should not be talking about her like this. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I'd say she's probably at least 16 by now. And I think, like, in Britain and stuff, you can, like, get married and stuff at 16, right? Well... (laughs) Right? Well, it's also the future, so who knows? It's also, there's no age of consent well. in the future. No, there is. There's always an age of consent. There better be. And if not, then I will fix. I, I will use time I travel think, to fix the future. I feel like that's it's throughout the entire series so far, but I think it's especially in this serial that they're really pushing the doctor being her grandfather and knowing what's best for her and knowing how to take care of her and there's something that happens with the end that makes me very uncomfortable but we're not getting there yet no. apparently. Right. <laughs> but their their relationship does kind of it's been building since the sensorites though i feel it like. has mm-hmm. but it's the, there's something about the relationship and that the doctor is kind of controlling of susan and it's played as like oh he's so protective and he loves her but like just let her be which is another thing that they've been building up too she keeps going against what other people are saying for her. she's trying to go her own way She's trying to find her own place in the universe. And that becomes... And she deserves that. It'd be really big in this episode. <laughs> yes. So, um, um, they go to the warehouse. Yes. There are no spank bottoms. Um, <laughs> they go to the warehouse, and I think, I believe it's Ian and the Doctor. It's Ian yes. and the Doctor. Ian and the Doctor go to the warehouse, and they find another dead body. Because mm-hmm. why not? Um, and they've got another... I don't think we mentioned, but the, the person who... They threw find out that it's 2164 from a convenient calendar. <laughs> Both of the dead bodies we've seen so far have the best helmets ever. 
I want them so bad. I don't. What are have, what are they made out of? Like I don't even know how to describe them. Except it's just yeah. metal shit on their head. That's <laughs> it. I mean, if you sat me down and said make something vaguely sci-fi looking, like that's probably it's like those like dental helmet things. <laughs> yeah, but, like, like, that looks like headgear. Yeah, and they've got little like dishes on the side that light up. Do they? I think so. Or maybe I painting. imagined that. Maybe. maybe I think you made it a I little think... cooler in your head than <laughs> yeah. it actually is. I'm pretty sure when they're like receiving messages, the discs. Well, you they... thought that Ian and Shackles actually existed. I you, did. You, think that. <laughs> you <laughs> like thought about that scene so much, you made it exist. <laughs> well, so the, the thing with Rebel Men, though, is like you look at them, you. And to me, I'm like, this is the earliest version of the Cybermen. The Cybermen. Absolutely. And I thought that, I'm like, did the Daleks invent the Cybermen? Is that what this episode is going to be about? And then, right. And then it wasn't. And it was kind well, of... Well, the Cybermen, the Cybermen was... seem... I mean, a lot of the Cybermen do seem to be... They do Cybermen things in the episode. Oh, yeah. To be fair, the, when the Cybermen eventually do show up, which I've seen, it's mm-hmm. the last First Doctor story. Oh, uh, they okay. don't look anything like the Robo Men. Oh. They look like they're wearing these weird Wait, socks. <laughs> I have to say, though, the very first time the Robo Men are given a name, a Dalek is, is talking to him and he calls them the Robo Patrol. And I was just like, yes, sold. They're never called the Robo Patrol. Ever again. again. They're called they're the, the Robo Men. disappointing. But Robo Patrol is what they were called, like, the very first time. And it's also the name of my new band. And I'm selling t shirts. That okay. should have been the RoboCop sequel, is Robo, Robo Patrol. Patrol. Like, you do the aliens thing. Instead of one alien, there's. Shit tons of Robo Men, Robo Cops. It's Robo <laughs> Patrol, right? Yeah. Too many Spider Men. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's a reference to a conversation we had before the podcast started. <laughs> I feel like your listeners watch the same show I do. Possibly. <laughs> so they're in the warehouse, they find the dead body, which has been stabbed. Like, literally, they're like looking for tools and they kind of like knock over a bunch of boxes oh, and the oh. body falls out. And also, there's a man sneaking around in there. Yes. Yeah. There are men sneaking around everywhere in this. Episode, actually. I mean, it's this is the show of sneaking because apparently it's super easy to do <laughs> when there's no one else around and you can hide behind things. Well, you, just, you don't even have to hide behind anything. You just have to press yourself up against the wall. wall. And the, yeah, yes. there's a scene where like the do- the doctor is hiding. Doctor and Ian are hiding by pressing up against the wall, and a series of Daleks go by him. One of them's eye stalk literally looks right, right at, at the doctor. Straight in the face. It stays looking at him as it walks away, too. Like, <laughs> and they're like, that was a close one. It wasn't. It was, like, dead on. It wasn't close. It was there. <laughs> it happened. That is in my That Dalek there, is a shitty Dalek. Okay. And we're jumping way ahead. <laughs> we need to get out of this warehouse, man. What happens oh, next? Oh, but, but, but when they find the dead body, Ian checks his pulse and says he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> And Joe lost it. I and I'm pretty sure he so stands hard. over him and, like, pulls the knife out. And it's like, Ian, stop standing over dead bodies and touching weapons. <laughs> stop <laughs> it. Did you not learn your lesson? <laughs> You've literally been on trial for murder. Stop doing it. And then they, yeah, they, they, and then they look at the, the helmet. It's a radio helmet. And then Ian just, like, kicks down a door and falls and his stunt double looks nothing <laughs> like him. Oh, but it was kind of really cool. So, like, they're exploring the warehouse, and, like, he, it, they're on, like, the second level, and he falls out of a window, and he's hanging on. Someone is. It's <laughs> <laughs> not Ian. I'm, he looks vaguely Asian to me. I don't... He looks nothing like Ian. I don't think they were supposed all. to see his face, because they did a right. good job of covering it up, and then... Yeah, there's, like, two seconds where you see his face. And you're like, well, that's Clearly. not Ian. I think but, they just hired whoever was the cheapest stunt double available. Or they had stock footage. <laughs> I, I, honest, I think, honestly, I think it was stock footage because it looks different. And then the doctor pulls him back in and, like, the doctor's like, God damn it, Ian! <laughs> Fuck, give me a heart attack! God! <laughs> And Ian's just like, oh, I almost died. What a wonderful adventure we're having. And the doctor's like, for fuck's sake, are you serious? I love him so much. Oh, my God, I need to lie down from that. I'm old. I'm so And, like, Ian's laughing it off. And it was, like, a near-death experience. But that's kind of Ian, though. Like, it's like when the doctor tried to poison, not poison, but, like, put him to, like, put him to sleep in Edge of Destruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, I, I was, I definitely tried to uh, poison you guys. And he's like, I knew. I think it's just become, like, a coping mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything's too weird around me. I'm just gonna laugh with that's, it. That's, I'm just gonna roll with it, because that's the only way I can deal. This is I'm really try- not I, going. I'm trying to signal to Tony that I want water. I've been trying to signal her all night, and she doesn't understand <laughs> any of them. It would probably be quicker if you just interrupt the podcast. 
We can edit it out later. <laughs> yeah. So the doctor gives Ian a thorough talking to. Well, Barbara and Susan are back by the TARDIS. And Barbara figures shit out. Oh, yeah. That's like her job. <laughs> I have a tag on Tumblr that is Barbara Wright Always Right. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Wright, always right. Can I get that on a t-shirt? I love it. I would buy Oops. that t-shirt. <laughs> I would buy the hell out of that shirt. Yeah, um, Barbara kind of figured, mostly based on the poster, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. she's like, I don't think we're in our do- the right time here. And what? there's something with the bells of the clock. Like, they're not going off. They're like, this is really weird. We're definitely Yeah, they keep yeah. saying, I should, Barbara has, has a couple of scenes where she's like, it's so quiet. Like, you don't understand. We're in London. I should be hearing something. Mm-hmm. The, doc- the doctor and Ian figure it out, but because they're like, Oh, well, there's a nuclear power plant. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, this calendar says 2164. You think we're in the future? They have, like, have to have it hit over the head <laughs> before they figure it out. I do Whereas like... Barbara's like, subtle clues. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really great Barbara episode, It by is. The way. Oh, I love good Barbara like, episodes. I wanted to do this originally because of Susan and what happens to her, but this is an amazing Barbara episode. I was really... I've been reading, because this, this serial was adapted... Into a movie, the second uh, non-canon, I guess, Doctor Who. But is that not like where it's Doctor Who is the character? Yeah, there was Doctor Who and the Daleks, and then um, Doctor Who Dalek Invasion. 1984. I think it's called the same thing. It's know. like called Dalek Invasion of Earth. It's just Dalek Invasion of Earth, the knockoff movie. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I don't think it, like there's a. I think there's like a year title. Maybe it's like Dalek 2164. Look it up. <laughs> but, I'm on the page. I as well. Um, but it's the Peter Cushing Doctor. And uh, the second one, I've, what I was reading is they took most of Barbara's awesome stuff and gave it to somebody else. Some they, dude. They, random dudes. Not even the same guys all the time. The cool stuff that she does in this episode, they gave to dudes. And like, the character sad. who plays Barbara's character, I don't know I don't know what her name is, but apparently she does not much. Yeah. But she's just kind mm-hmm. of there. Like, why would you do that? Why would you rewrite something to make it not as good? But also she's from what I've heard, the sort of, the, the Ian-esque character is played by, it's named Bernard Cribbins, is yeah. that his name? Oh. Will. Will. He's played by Will. I love him. Will. Yeah, from New Who. I haven't seen that one. I've seen the first Doctor Who, the Doctor Who and the Daleks, but I haven't seen the second one. Anyway, let's wrap up this episode. Oh, uh, wait, I think <laughs> we get still... To, let's get to the cliffhanger. Wait, we still have a couple of things here. Say them. These guys show up and, like, take Barbara and Susan away. I mean, not, like... We're kidnapping you. They're like, we gotta get out of here. Are you guys crazy? What are you doing Mm -hmm. sitting out in the open? And they're like, what? Like, we gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. Run. Run. Basically run. And uh, then there's like a lot of location filming. I think this is the most location on location I mean, Reign of Terror had a lot more, but this one is like really impressive. Like the scope of the serial seems so much bigger. The world feels as big as it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And it's really awesome. I I think this has more location filming than Reign of Terror did. Reign of Terror just had the doctor walking and that was it on location. Yeah. This had a lot, and I, they, they could do a lot more because they set it in London, and it was cheap to film there. <laughs> so there's a lot of it. They, yeah, they're just running, and it looks great, and it's wide open spaces, and it's it you doesn't don't... feel as set heavy. Yes. Mm-hmm. To Doctor and uh, Ian, Ian, come back. They see a UFO, and <laughs> Ian points I at it. Really... <laughs> Which, okay, so here's something? the thing. The one we were watching had reconstructed new special effects. I was really mad about oh, it when yours? I found out. Not that I noticed. It, like it was a CGI UFO. It was a and they redid the the nuclear the the power the power plant thing as well. Mm-hmm. But I looked at like comparisons, comparisons. online because I because I didn't know one. that we were watching like updated graphics, and it's like why why do that? Yeah, like, like I I had the DVDs. So I was watching like the original footage. Um, yeah, it has an option for both. That's why I had two discs. I didn't watch the second disc. Uh-huh. Oh. Was, this really was over. I didn't need to. <laughs> like, why is the second disc here? I just can't think of any reason to do that except for to sell DVDs, I guess. I also, what's it. weird yeah. is it's updated, but it's also made to look like it's from the 60s at the same time. So right. why, why bother? Right. Just, just let it look like it. it's from yeah. the 60s. Well, they did the same thing with um, Red Dwarf, and it's pointless don't do it i remember like in the red dwarf they did this they added comedy sound effects to one scene where one character falls and you hear like stuff crashing but the thing (laughs) was that character is a hologram and doesn't touch things and they added in the sound effect of him crashing into stuff because he fell what (laughs) no you're so mad i am mad anyway apparently i mean bbc's does that a lot i guess they take old sci-fi shows and like revamp them i do kind of wish someone would do that with sliders because i like sliders but i get secondhand embarrassment watching it sometimes like (laughs) i don't know why you thought you could do a cgi dragon but you can't and you should not have tried 
I'm okay with like cleaning up the footage and stuff, but don't redo the special effects. Yeah. I mean, the bad special effects is kind of the charm of this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe with like Star Trek or something big like that. Maybe all Star Trek, all of them. <laughs> Well, you like the original series. Yeah, there's a lot of them, so... Yeah. Like, maybe, I can maybe see that, because it's, I feel like it takes itself more seriously. I mean, it's still probably a little cheesy here and there and stuff. Have you but watched Star Trek? I actually no. haven't. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, 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 I feel like Doctor Who's definitely more of a... It's of more a, campier. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Star Trek tries to be more serious, I feel like, sometimes. Yeah, it just... I think it depends always. on the uh, version. Version. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is kind of the feeling that I get. Oh, yes. But, I mean, I could see updating the special effects for Star Trek mm-hmm. and it being okay. But for Doctor Who, it just seems unnecessary. Yeah. Especially if you're going to try to make it look like it's still made in the 60s. Like, what's mm-hmm. the point? <laughs> oh, and then uh, they all go to, well, they go to a hideout. Barbara, Barbara, and Susan. Barbara and Susan get taken to a hideout with a couple of, like, uh, it's other It's the humans. Resistance members. Yeah, basically. Apparently and... it's called the Dortman, which I did not pick it's up at the all. Dortmund? It's called something. I thought there was a character No, there's named a character named Dortman. I thought that was the, okay. the scientist. Yeah, that's the guy in the wheelchair. Okay, yes, this is just bad, badly worded. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Dortman's awesome. Dortman's the best. One of my favorite novel characters is named Dortmunder, so I remember that really okay. easily. Meanwhile, uh, Ian... But wait, 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 before we get to that, I just don't want you to miss yes. out on your favorite line that Susan says. Oh my god, it is my favorite line. I'm I'm <laughs> I've never identified with Susan more than in this episode, and it's better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> they go into this resistance, right? And they're like, "All right, what can you do? Because we don't really want you here if you can't do something." Mm-hmm. And they you know ask Barbara, "Can you cook?" And Barbara's like, "Yeah, I can cook good enough, I guess." And they're like, "Great, we need cooks. Go." And they go, they ask Susan, "What do you do?" And Susan just looks at the man and goes, "I eat." And I was like, me too, Susan. Me too. I respect that. <laughs> I eat. Aren't you glad I, I stopped you yes. so you could get that yes, story out? Yes, I am. That was one of my more favorite moments. When, <laughs> I, when when that happened, I was like, we're jiffing that because I have never loved Susan more. That's when we get the scene where the doc, they, doc and Ian notice the, the doc, poster. The doctor. The doctor. <laughs> The doc, I like, I call him doc. I can't well, help it. Well, you'd be very upset. <laughs> well, I do it because it's in your notes, my notes, yeah. and it's quicker to write doc than doctor. <laughs> um, but the doctor and Ian notice the poster. That's that's when that mm-hmm. scene happens. And then like Ian's like, maybe it's a plague. Yeah, then, because uh, you wouldn't, you can't dump bodies in the water if there's a plague. You and uh, the water. then the Robo Men show up. The mm-hmm. Robo Patrol. <laughs> And then we have the coolest, in, like, a really cool uh, cliffhanger that's also... Every, the, one I, of the best reveals ever. Like, it's it's on par there with, like, in the first Dalek serial, the first yeah, time we yeah. see the Daleks with the, mm. the plunger, but this time it's the Dalek. So, the, like, the Robo Patrol shows up, and Ian's like, all right, when I say, like, I can't think of anything else, when I say run, we'll run into the river. And they mm. go to run into the river, and there's this... The Dalek, Dalek slowly rises, rises from, from yes. the water, and it's awesome, and it's terrifying. I'm like, I don't know. I'm always surprised by how scared I still am by the Daleks. They're so silly. I'm terrified of them. I don't. <laughs> They're so scary. There's a future serial where they literally get defeated by basically like tricking them to run over a hill and then they fall down. <laughs> yeah, you get to the point where it's like you always but, get to a point in a Dalek story where you're just kind of pushing them around and that's how they mm-hmm. get defeated. But before you get to that point, they're always still scary. Always. Yeah. It's weird. That's the end of World's End. The end of World's End. The end of the end of the World's End. And we. We're now to the Daleks, not to be confused with the previous serial, the Daleks. <laughs> Naming things is hard, you guys. Yes. Let's name an episode that's the exact same name as a previous serial, the Daleks. Which actually, I think that one had a different title back then too. Like there wasn't like ever an official official title. I mean, some of them didn't have official titles. I wonder how many people actually know the titles, like when they were airing then. It's not mm. like you could just look it up on Wikipedia like right. we are doing now, and you don't have your DVR seat on screen. Like, do they actually know the individual episode titles? Does anyone care? Don't mm. they all have title well, they, screens? They, they do have title That's screens, true. but not... Oh, yes, because one of my notes was that the title page is like the ultimate in 60s sci-fi. <laughs> like, if you think of every single 60s sci-fi movie you have ever seen, that is what this title card looks like. The one for this episode? For the very beginning of the whole, of the whole serial. serial. It's... Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, they, but they had individual episode titles, but they didn't, they didn't really have, like, serial. S- serial mm-hmm. titles. I got you. I mean, sometimes they would be, like, like press releases and stuff, but, but not on your, your TV. But the Robo Patrol take the Doctor and Ian. <coughs> Robo Patrol. <laughs> Robo Patrol! 
Back at the uh, hideout, we meet Tony's favorite character of this serial, the Foot Doctor. <laughs> I do. She's my favorite character. She's great. She's Jenny. She, is her Jenny. Name. Jenny. I mean, she's not a Foot Doctor. Well, I mean, I call... who just decided that. <laughs> well, she's like looking her. at she's looking at Susan's ankle and, and like, like really abruptly and roughly. That's why so I, I just I I have a she's bad funny. time, a hard time remembering names. So she just became the foot doctor. <laughs> she's very kind of brash. Or she's just no nonsense. She's just like, I look, like her. we're in the future. Things Most suck. everyone's yeah. dead. We don't have time for anything but, like, mm-hmm. getting shit done. And she doesn't really know entirely what she's doing. Yeah. But she's like, I just need to get away from these Daleks. I need to get the hell out of here. I'm going to team up with whoever is going yeah, to keep she's, me the safest. She's going to live. That's... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's her. That's her thing. She's gonna. She's gonna stay alive. Her and uh, Barbara sort of team up, and it's nice. This, this yeah. is my thing with this episode. Is I have a theory that someone falls in love with Barbara in every single serial. <laughs> yes, that's and not in, a theory. In this that's case, straight up. Oh legit. yeah, fact. But in this case, it is Jenny. Yeah. She's super in love with Barbara. Oh, I'm, yeah, okay. Like, there's one point where she's like, it would be safer for me to stay and go somewhere else, but I want to stay with you, so I'm coming with you. Reign of Terror had l- at least three people, Fall possibly above. four. It had the, the guard that was being creepy to her. It had Leon. It had even James Sterling was, like, flirting with her in that last scene. Yeah. Everybody loves Barbara. I That's love true. Barbara. I think one of the ants or bees from Planet of the Giants. <laughs> that one fly that came to visit her mm-hmm. and she was fainted. Like, yeah. Yep. And then, mm-hmm. like, she fainted and turned him down and the fly went and he killed itself. Uh, died. Yeah. Suicide. <laughs> Suicide. Suicide. Suicide number six. Oh, and then Dortmund. Makes pulls... the most comical bomb. It is the most bomb looking bomb I have <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> I mean, sure, it's shiny and kind of metal, but it has that, like, ridiculously. Like, it's round, and it's got the... The wick? The wick that curls up on top. It's a bomb, in the most cartoon sense of the word, it's, bomb. It's kind of like the bomb that they have in the Batman movie. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but then when you finally see them in action, you just kind of smash them like water balloons. <laughs> yeah, you, like, don't light it, don't you don't... Well. I don't yeah. know. It's I don't not... know what the wick is for. I, I don't think at any point we ever saw anyone light the wick. It's just there to make sure that you know that it's a bomb. <laughs> and he, he's like so proud of this bomb, and I'm like, great work there, Boris. Get loose and squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I legitimately started laughing so hard when he pulled it out, and I said, that is the most bomb-looking bomb. The most bomb-looking bomb. Like when you think bomb, that's that's what that's you, you imagine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, like these are the resistance. Um, they're gonna fight the Daleks, and I don't know anything else that happens. Um, <laughs> what's uh James Dean? David. I don't, David. No, 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 no. David's an important character. David's very important. I really like David, actually. Yeah. I do, too. Sexy rebel. He, he noticed that happens. Doctor, and he saw, I think he saw the Doctor and Ian get taken. And he's, like, telling them, and, like, well, we have to go rescue him, I guess. Is this the scene where the, they figure out what happens if you get taken? Possibly. Mm. Let's just tell them anyway. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, <laughs> there's a scene where it's basically, like, usually if the Daleks take you, you get turned into a robo guy. Uh, and they're, like, you can escape. <laughs> what? Robo guy? Robo guy. <laughs> You know, the robo guys. And, like, once you're on their saucer, like, that's it, you're screwed. And, you know, yeah. it's like, cut to the doctor and Ian on the saucer. saucer. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's when they're, like, standing in line, and they're, like, looking at the Daleks, and they just exposition dump. We must be in the Daleks' past, and and uh, they look different. They have these radar dishes. Oh, I bet it's mm. because they're an invasion force, and... That's why they can move outside of the city. Um, and they're and not on metal and not running by static electricity. Any other plot holes we missed? No? Uh, All right. Um, uh, okay, let's go. When they're on this ship, it's... I never understood... This. Like, I've watched this twice now, and I don't understand that. They're like, these two seem really smart. Let's give them a test. And the test is like, can you escape from our prison? Why would you set that up? <laughs> what a terrible test! The Daleks aren't very bright. And I kept expecting, like, when, like, they, they first get put in the prison, to Ian to just, like, walk around and look around. He's like, well, it's not impossible to escape, <laughs> which he did in Reign of Terror. <laughs> well, I could probably escape if I wanted to. I also no, don't understand what they were testing them for. Like, what were they going to do with them if they succeeded, I don't, but they were able to keep them? I don't think it was a test. 
I think it was they, like... They if, used the word test. <laughs> no, okay, but here's the thing. It's such a bad idea that the other prisoner that's with them is like, okay, I'm pretty sure the Daleks wouldn't just leave the stuff lying around if you could use <laughs> it to escape. And Ian's like, watch us. <laughs> yeah. What I thought was it was a fail safe. Like, it's if a Dalek yeah. gets stuck in the prison... Like, See, that makes, more, that makes too much sense for two <laughs> Well, that's what he said. He's like, if you were a Dalek and you got stuck in here... This is how you get out because yeah. they have their their little robot. But they definitely use the word shit. test because I I listened to it last night like packing and stuff and I'm like wait a minute like I questioned it before but now I question it even more the <laughs> second time. It, it makes is less very sense. Weird. <laughs> if it is a test, it's dumb. Mm-hmm. If it's also a failsafe, it's dumb because there's other Daleks that can just let you out. You're the only one on the ship and you lock yourself in this jail cell. I mean, if you're a Dalek, then you're like, look, you've accidentally locked yourself in a jail cell. You belong there. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not you're good not enough worthy. to be a part of the Dalek race. I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, we also get a lot of, like, exposition about they're mining the Earth. They mm-hmm. don't know why. They're, they're going to attack the heliport. The, the rebels are. Barbara comes up with a, a plan. Ooh, yeah! That's Barbara's <laughs> thing. She's like, okay, because they can't figure out how to get into one of the saucers. And mm-hmm. Barbara's like, okay, it's super easy, you guys. Wear the helmets, pretend to be robo-men. It's, like, basically, like, henchmen 101. They, yeah. they give that to Dortmund in the, the movie. Oh. Oh. Which is why yeah. you never give your henchmen, like, uniforms. Because, like... Well, it, a- it's their Are communication you- tool. It's their way to control them. And it's their way to, like, send messages to them. But if you can we talk about why the Broman actually exist? Actually exist? They're I there to be... So. They're there to be, like, watchmen for the human race. Like, we're going to put the human race to work, and the Robomen are going to be in charge of you. They're, like, they're, they're the middle managers. Yeah, it's basically, we only have so many people. So why don't they just make everyone Robomen and have them know. do the labor? I want to say yeah. it's a resources thing. Like, we only yeah. have so many Robo-Men helmets. Plus, <laughs> it seems like after a while, the Robo-Men... Just kind of go crazy. Go crazy and kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, you'd eventually run out. What a terrible... But technology makes no sense. <laughs> what a poor design. So, maybe Barbara learned something from the Sensorites. Yes. Which is that Just wear pretend. sashes. Yeah. <laughs> and people will think you are... If you, you dress <laughs> like you belong there, no one will question you. That's true in real life, actually. Dress for Is the it? job you want. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that now that I've said that I run a blog telling how to be adults. <laughs> that is not my advice. Do not just dress up as... No, do it. <laughs> no. Dress up like however you want and get into places for free. Dress up like a doctor and be like, time to cut you open. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Dress up like a pilot, I like, kidding. time to fly this God. plane. I will say, if you have, like, a decent-looking camera on you, you can get into most places. We're just like, yeah, I'm here to film the thing. And people are like, okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, okay, so they... they Don't they, sneak into places. It's not responsible. They go through this incredibly complex magnet game, and it's completely pointless because the second they get out, they get captured. <laughs> <laughs> the instant. Which, so I guess it was a test, and they were like, great. They are smart. Put them back in. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're like, well, time to robotize you. Time to put you through Dr. Robotnik's <gasps> machine. Oh, mm-hmm. no. This moment, like, this whole scene gives it, like, upsets me genuinely. They, it they, hurts my heart. <laughs> the the rebels move in to attack, and the, the, the Daleks have, well, the Robo-Men have put the doctor. They grab the doctor, and they're gonna make him a Robo-Guy. And he's like, no, stop. And it's like, stop. <laughs> Everyone, stop! You're hurting the doctor! It'll be okay, Tony. <laughs> She's, like, covering her eyes and almost crying. It's adorable. It upset me. <laughs> That's the That's cliffhanger, the cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. of the Daleks! And now we're on to Day of Reckoning. Day of Reckoning. Then the doctor gets off the machine. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, someone, someone pulls get... him off. Is it one of the rebels? It's one of the rebels, yeah, because... Okay. Okay, yeah. so apparently he's during, still not doing great. I think he's kind of from like what I've heard. Yeah, the the actor that was carrying him. <gasps> yeah, they're running out of the saucer and he dropped the doctor and hurt him. That's why he's like not hobbling in. and stuff through yeah. the rest of this episode. But he's not in the next episode at all because he hurt himself. Because there's there's was it was it the rebel or because there's a scene where they like move him and put him on the table. Is that the when he got dropped? No, it's when they're running out of the, the saucer and, like, chaos is happening. Oh. Like, you dropped him on the ramp. I would feel so bad. Because you're, like, an extra you hurt the in the lead. show and you hurt the lead. Yeah. You're just like, oh, no. It's a bad day for me. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say, 
the, this episode opens up with Dortmund playing with a very tiny chess set. He does. It's so small. I just want to say that because Tony likes small things, as mm-hmm. you may remember from our last podcast. It's pretty much all we talked about the last podcast, so I'm sure you remember. <laughs> and it continues into this serial. It was so Probably small. Probably forever. I wonder if they did that on purpose, like, because this show repeats a lot of things and ideas, and I wonder if, like, eh, we'll throw a little tiny chess set as a, as a callback so. to tiny stuff and mm-hmm. Planet of the Giants. No. No. <laughs> no. It's just a he tiny He just had chess a tiny set. chess set. It's travel size. It's compact. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, like, chaos going on. Everybody's breaking out of prison. They're throwing um, those bombs, by the way, and they're... I kept turning to Joe going, okay, what do the bombs do? I'm very confused because I, I'm not understanding what they do. As far as I can tell, they just kind of explode in a puff of smoke. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't figure it out. And then, like, the fight's kind of over, and it's like, your bombs didn't work. And I was like, okay, that's why I was confused. <laughs> I can't always tell, because I can't always tell what's happening. <laughs> We also just kind of expect that some of the effects are going to be really bad, (laughs) and we're supposed to take it at face value that it's working. So I'm sitting here like, I don't know what's happening, but the bombs didn't work. And there's there's a scene where Barbara is like, I'm going to go fight, and like Susan's trying to stop her, and Barbara's like, fuck that, I'm going to kick some ass. (laughs) She does. She goes and she kicks ass. Everybody gets away, except for Ian, who's still on the fucking ship. Ian. Ian. Everybody gets oh. off of the ship, everyone gets away, and Ian's like, oh look, I found a cargo hold, I'm gonna hide in it. <laughs> I, this because episode... this is the episode, is, is the episode of Ian climbing into small spaces. <laughs> no, really that is. is, like, Ian's character from the beginning. It's true, so, but it's... I'm gonna hide somewhere, and do not ever hide with Ian, because he hides in the worst, worst places place. possible. Every time! <laughs> and a lot of them get picked up and moved other places. <laughs> so he's hiding in the cargo hold. Every time he so gets in and out of the cargo hold, I'm like, too. stop, go back down. Yes. You're gonna get caught during the cargo hold. You're too precious. You must be protected. <laughs> he gets in the cargo hold and the saucer flies off. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Like things See? move. Things, he he hides places and then gets taken away from everyone else. Like do not let him choose your hiding spots. Never. The rebels are like, well, what do we do now? And the bomb doesn't work. And Dortmund's like, better bombs. <laughs> no, what, there's what a great think? scene <laughs> where between him and Jenny, where I think it's Jenny, where he's like, how many men did we lose? And Jenny's like, I don't know, all of them. Or is it Jenny or is it one of the other? I want to say it was one of the men. Yeah, I think so. And he was just like, I don't know, all of them maybe? I don't know. And like, yeah. he says it very nonchalantly. Like, I think everyone died. I have no idea. And you're like, oh. There was an awful lot of death, too. I guess yeah. everyone died. That's another theme, actually, is that you know, so many people have died that we need to rebuild the human race. Like, yeah. we're at that point. I do like, like, a lot of people have died, like, throughout serials, and it's really, really getting to Barbara. I mean, she's had a couple lines... This serial, she had a couple lines, uh, Reign of Terror, I think, where she's just like, death is wherever we go. Like, mm-hmm. it just seems like it's always with us, which is cool. <laughs> it's actually a theme throughout all of Doctor Who. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's been there since the very beginning. And right now, I think it's weighing really heavily on Barbara. There's also a scene where, like, David and Susan are, like, running away, and they just mm-hmm. hear awful stuff happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a point where they're, like, hiding... And I hear the Daleks attacking and, like, killing, like, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And Susan just starts crying and turns into him. And he's, like, protectively holding her. her. And, Uh, like, that's the moment that you really start to ship it, if you weren't already. (laughs) (laughs) But then the the rebels decide to go to the other, this other place, which they don't say what it is. But it turns out to be a museum. museum. Did you say, if there are, if if there are any other people, they will probably be at the museum. The transportation museum. Which I assume, I kept thinking that is so weird that they're being so specific about it, that it's a museum. And then it occurred to me, it's It's a museum. Yeah, it's the future. So they could be like, this is why we have this ridiculously old piece of technology. Yeah. Because it's in a museum. (laughs) But that's probably current that's, for the time, but it's, it's said the future. It's actually so. fairly good writing. Yes. Yeah. To cover their asses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And it took, because I kept thinking, that's so specific. Why are they being mm. so specific? And I went, oh, oh, good for that. Good yeah. for them for thinking that. And then Ian gets out immediately, like. Into a worse hiding spot. <laughs> well, he, he finds, like, a, a robo man comes in and sees <laughs> him, and they fight, and. Uh, he punches his helmet off. Right off of his head. He like, and then the Robo Man like walks into a wall and sparks fly very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and is that when he bumps into the other guy? Yeah, is it the he other guy meets another guy on the. Like, and I guess they there was both a, hide in the cargo bay. There was yes. another rebel who got stuck there, and yeah, now they're but, both yeah. hiding in the cargo. Like jacket bay. guy. I have his name here somewhere. Ch- it's a jacket guy. It's ch- <laughs> Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! It is <laughs> not. <laughs> it is because. 
Ian spends a lot of time with Larry after this. So he does a, spend a lot of time with Larry. The rebels are Larry David? Yes. Yes. I now want to see a Doctor Who no. adventure with Larry David. <laughs> just complaining about it just the entire time. Larry David and the first Doctor would get along so well. They, they really would. would. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> Fan fiction in process. <laughs> just complaining. About, it'd be like it'd be like the Doctor and Marco Polo. Marco Polo or... Uh, Not Marco Polo, but... Uh, Genghis? Yeah, Khan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know where we're at now, but I said, how was I saying that? Uh, okay, well, Barbara and Jenny are on the way to this transportation museum. They, oh, is this one they get captured or did that happen already? No, that hasn't happened yet. That's later. But that's there's just later when they're going to That's the They don't have Dortmund saucer. at that point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right now, they have Dortmund and they're just like going across this bridge. This is another like on location filming that looks great. They're just yeah, like push, they're pushing, they're running him, with um, Which I don't think we've mentioned, but he's... Uh, Dorman's wheelchair bound. They're pushing him down the street, and it looks. You just see get excited Alex every time they're going by Big Ben. Yeah, and they also like, they had like a lot of like graffiti of the stuff that's on like all of the Rebel Men have like this thing the like symbol, <laughs> and you see that graffiti on like statues as they're going past them. There's a lot of uh, thought put into it, and it, like I said, it just makes this episode feel bigger and more real. Instead of seeing them, you know, walking like a tight shot of them walking what you are going to assume to be as a street. You see them, like, running down the street, and there are, you know, Daleks off in the distance, and it's... And they're, like, moving at a fast pace. They're running, yeah. yeah. And it's it really builds the tension instead of, like, we're just watching them walk the places again. It's very nice. <laughs> yes, I think it's the first time we've had this amount of movement. Yeah. But it also makes... It seemed like the Daleks have actually invaded the whole world, and it's not just this tiny little corner of London. Yeah. I wonder how they, like, I guess they had to, like, clear the streets and stuff for all this, they too. They must have had, that must have actually been expensive. Yeah. I feel like, I really do feel like this is the first time where it's like, hey, that first season did great. Would you guys like some money to make this with? And they were like, oh, thank God. Oh, my God. Maybe they just filmed on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have another, this is Dalek. Dalekinium, because they think maybe they're oh, yeah. digging yeah. for more metal more, to more make. More Dalekinium, and they're like, the... no, nah, they've had that. Yeah, yeah, it can't be that. Like, you can get that anywhere. It has to be something very specific to Earth. Why do they need our planet as opposed to anywhere I else don't in the universe? I really feel like that question got answered. No. no it... Why do they need our planet? Like, you find out their actual plan, and then it's like, okay, you could have chosen anywhere else. They need there to build an way. There's like eight planets around us that have nobody on it. (laughs) (laughs) You couldn't have used one of those? Can we say the plan, by the way? Go for it. I don't care. So the Daleks' master plan is they're going to, like, basically dig out the core of the planet and just pilot it around the universe as a ship. And that's the funniest thing to me. Why they wanted... Which... By the way, the Daleks wanted to steal the Earth and, like, move it around the universe, which they do uh, in New Who. (laughs) Seasons and seasons and seasons in the future, they actually end up stealing the Earth. (laughs) Yes. Technically, before they tried to... (laughs) This time. (laughs) (laughs) My continuity... I just had this image of them just like driving around like a little like bumper car, like like how do you pilot so it? Like, I don't know. They're I don't tiny. Even know what the plan was because you they're gonna hollow it out and put machinery in, yeah, and then pilot it. Like how do you drive something that big though? That's my thing. I'm really mad you after you said there fishing? are like eight other planets. Like now I'm thinking about it and it's making me really mad. Well, like how about any planet in your Scaro? Yeah, but like why, why is it so far, far away? <laughs> Maybe they already have a bunch of other planets. <laughs> then why are they flying around in little saucers? I don't know. This was there not is, thought through. There <laughs> is uh, something kind of like that in uh, Ninja Turtles. What they have is, like, they basically broke their planet apart through war. And they just kind of fly around on these big land chunks that were once their planet. And those are their spaceships now. And I, I, I can imagine the Daleks being in a similar boat. Like, we yeah. destroyed things so bad. Actually, we've already destroyed our land chunks. We need some more <laughs> land chunks. Let's just go to Earth and get some. Um, and then we get to a scene that's sad, but also kind of stupid, which is Dortmund's been working on his bombs. They're at the museum now, yeah. by the way. Yeah, they they go to the museum, and, mm-hmm. and I don't think they were with Dortmund, but Dortmund was at the museum. Is that no, it? they, they, no, they sure. brought no, him they, all yeah, the way there. Yeah, we just talked about it. I just <laughs> said that I liked yeah. it. <laughs> well, Jenny was like, you need to leave him behind. Like, he's going to slow us down. We're going to get killed if we bring him. And Barb was like, no, you don't understand. He will absolutely get killed if we leave him behind. We're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. 
She is done with this death toll. Yeah, yeah. Dorman waits for Ginny and Barbara to go off and do something, or he tells them to go do something. I don't remember which. Well, they're, they're trying to they get see. truck working, right? Is that... Some... Yeah, they're in the transportation museum, and they're trying to get transportation, basically. <laughs> and the dogs are really close, and he's like, basically, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to distract them, you do that. And he's the formula he has, or his plans for the bomb, he's given to Barbara, and it's at that point, you know, like, Oh, he's not coming back from this. Yeah, no, he, like, he yeah. does not plan to come he back. He has made the decision to sacrifice himself, probably because everyone around him keeps saying, you're going to get us killed. And, but he's going to, it's also to also test to see if the new bomb works. And it, does it? I don't think it does. No, I think Cause, it does. Because he gets, he gets up and stands up out of, he like goes and rolls out in front of the, the Daleks and stands up and like the wheelchair swings back very mm. dramatically. It's a really nice shot. But then he, like, throws the bomb at the Daleks. I think it works. I think the Dalek just gets in first. Yeah, like, yeah. he does get exterminated. He falls in the weirdest way, though, because he's, like, on his palms. And you his, like, elbows are stick, sticking <laughs> so, out. Yeah, you have I know, but there's a shot later where... He was where not it, a stuntman. It, there's a shot later where it shows him in his death position for a long time. And it's a really good shot, and it's really sad. But it's also, he's in that he's weird, still in like, that position. like, he's about to do a push-up. <laughs> But it's yeah, very like, sad. Ginny gets really mad about it, too. Yeah, like, which this, she like, wanted to leave him behind yeah. before, and now she's like, why would you just throw your life away like that? And she's Barbara's like, like no, you no don't point. understand. He did this so you could survive. Yeah, Barbara's like, pissed. Yeah, but what, oh, before that happens, the Daleks come into the, the place, and like the my favorite Dalek moment is like he's scanning this like headless mannequin because he thinks <laughs> it's a person. <laughs> Because he's trying to interact with me, like, who are you? <laughs> like, it's a mannequin, Dalek, go home. You're drunk. <laughs> Quit trying to talk to the mannequin. Meanwhile, the saucer has landed, but they get out of the cargo bay, and they're like, I feel like they're like, this is this will be a cool camera move. We'll start from them in the cargo okay. thing and swing, swing up. up. But it's like, you see the edge of the set. It's mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. yeah. Jenny and Barbara get one of the trucks to work. And Barbara just mows over them. She over the dogs, runs just drives right through, through them. the Daleks. It was amazing. It was amazing. My notes literally start out, Barbara is a badass. Just friggin' stole a truck and ran over Daleks. She, there's like a line of Daleks on the street. I don't know, before we even get to that point, I kind of turned to Joe and I was like, I don't know why, but like, yes. Yes to Barbara driving a truck. Yeah. Like, Again, they give that to a guy in the movie. She hasn't movie. even done mm-hmm. anything yet. And I was just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like where this is going. And then there's a line of Daleks across the road and just whoosh, right I'll through this. And like Jenny's with her. I think that's the moment where Jenny like falls in love. Oh, Jenny was in love with her. That's the point where she's like, no, I'm definitely sticking with you instead of leaving. <laughs> but yeah, after that, she's with Barbara for life. She will follow her to the ends of the earth. <laughs> she is just hardcore head over heels after that point. Cause it's how like, how not be? Cause you know, this is like the, the like little bit of humanity left. These are, you know, the little bit of resistance, just like pockets of humanity. And Barbara just drove fucking through them. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that was one of those points where I'm like, yes, this is my favorite part of the episode. And well, then, like, actually, other way, things keep coming, and I'm like, that's my that's favorite, favorite part. <laughs> this is also my favorite part. Yeah. Also this. Yes. This, uh, this is, is actually in the, the next episode, the end of tomorrow. About halfway through it. Because this episode, with the saucer lands, and then we get the bomb. The Rebel Men mm-hmm. set up this uh, bomb that doesn't look like a bomb. No. It's really sad. It's not a bomb. It kind of looks, like looks like a briefcase. Or no. <laughs> it's like a big, like, concrete block looking thing. It's very rectangular, boxy. Here's my favorite thing about this bomb. <laughs> Zoom, zoom, <laughs> zoom, tick, zoom, tick, zoom, tick. And that's the end of that episode, and we're on to the end of tomorrow, where the doc passes out right at the beginning. Which, and they're like, oh, he's sick, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Which is because he was injured. He wasn't yeah. sick, you dropped him. Or, just oh, and that's when they're like, when the, the, the timer gets to the red bit, is that yes. when it goes off? Yeah. And I, we're like, that... My favorite thing about this bomb is it has all these symbols on it, right? These symbols that you can see on black and white TV... And they don't say, hey, when it gets to the triangle bit, it'll probably go off. They say, when it gets to the red one, (laughs) it'll go off. And we're sitting here like, well, what does that mean? (laughs) You mean the slightly darker gray one? (laughs) How will I know? How am I able to feel the appropriate amount of tension? I'm sitting here waiting for it to get to the red one. (laughs) 
there are symbols all around the thing. You could have just as easily, easily used the symbols. But you didn't. You used mm-hmm. colors. Why? But it's easily defeated because he pours acid on it. Yeah. That he had sure. on him, I suppose. I guess. David, David pours acid on it. David's prepared, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he is like the hero of our story. He is here to protect all of us. Well, and then the, but then the very next thing he says is like, let's leave behind the doctor, because... Uh, he's, he's dead too weight. old. Yeah, he's like, he's too old. We'll come back for him later. He'll be fine. It's not like they put bombs here. Well, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, really, truthfully, the thing that he says is like, the Daleks think they've already blown yeah. this place up. He'll be fine. They're not coming back here anytime soon. Yeah, they think we're all dead anyway. So he's not bad. Right? <laughs> but then Susan's there and she's like, no, that's yeah. my grandfather. We are not leaving him behind. And David's like, yes, you're right, honey. Okay, we're bringing him. <laughs> but they don't. Whatever you say. They leave him behind because the other, the other guy rebel. has oh, yeah. fi- found him. Because the doctor's not, they have to get rid of the doctor for an episode. I mean, yeah, basically. For recuperation. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I don't know the guy's name. Larry. Larry. Larry and Ian uh, find a bunch of slave miners. <laughs> yeah, they go down to the mines. And, Which um, the Larry, it's Larry's brother, sad, has a actually. brother who works in the mines, and so he yes. wants to go into the mines and figure out what it is the Daleks are mining for, because they don't know of the ridiculous plan that the Daleks have. So they're like, <laughs> whatever the Daleks want, it's in the, the it's in the center of, it's in the core of the earth. They're mining for it. Which they're all mining, by the way, with, like, wicker baskets, which I thought was weird. They said they're picking up giant rocks and putting them in wicker baskets and moving them. Why? And we don't know how the baskets? rocks get broken up, either. Wicker baskets seem like the poorest way to move things. This is before they get into the mine, though, because we have, they almost get caught by a robo-man. The robo-man says something about orders, and Ian's like, get new orders. He does, and actually. And, and the robo-man's like, oh, fuck, I don't know what to do. <laughs> fuck. Ah! Like, and, like short sorts out for a brain. second. Well, no, he gets he gets like he gets updates. He's like, okay, hold on a second. I'm he gonna does. update my software. I swear that's figure it lights out. up. The, like, Maybe it's it's light. Light. I think it's. I, I just remember he like looks up at the ceiling. Like I'm gonna get better reception if I look up towards <laughs> her. <laughs> Hang on, let me point my dish. <laughs> yeah. Always get terrible reception in these mines. There's a whole thing about, they meet this other guy who's a slave miner, and he's talking about there's this guy named Ashton who's in the, like, he's basically He kind of finds him, and he's like, no, wait, I'm thinking of something that already happened. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're gonna talk to Ashton, and he's going to possibly help them get back into London to get back to the target. Because he's able to, like, yeah, he's like the black market, basically. Yeah. He can sneak in and out and bring food and stuff. Then the, the... Barbara drives through the, the Daleks, and then the Daleks are, like, mad, so they blow the truck up. Which we saw uh, updated effects on that as well. How did oh, that did look? Really? I mean, I didn't see updated effects at all, so... Yeah, but, I mean, how did the truck explosion look? Did it look okay? Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I don't really remember so much what it looked like. <laughs> I just remember, like, everything happened after this. I think I may have been packing at that point still when I was rewatching. Ah. <laughs> uh. And this is the point where I'm like, no, wait, I want to watch this now. Um, oh, wait, no, I know what I did. I left and I watched the Hawks game instead. Oh, there you go. <laughs> This will no longer be relevant by the time this post. Hopefully they will have won Stanley Cup at that point. But if they don't, this is going to sound really bad. <laughs> Sorry if that's the case. Yeah, I hope not. But basically, they need to leave the truck. And they're like, okay, here's this house. Let's go to this house for help. And <laughs> That's the I, next yeah, episode. So, yeah, so that's the what? That's the next episode. Because we got, we got to get through Susan and David going to the sewers. <laughs> talk about uh, a new start. Like David and, and it's um, very heavy handed in Susan. this serial, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Making a new start, going back and finding your place in the universe. I probably it's... laughed unintentionally about the whole a new start thing because all I could think of was anus tart from Arrested Development. <laughs> so every time they said it, I just giggled because I'm a child. There's like talk about alligators in the sewers. And then... I really love, by the way, they're like, I feel like at some point the writers are just like, how do we get alligators in the sewers? Can we make that a story? Can we, can we make that happen? Like, sure, they escape from the zoo. <laughs> There's all sorts of animals that escape from the zoo after the Daleks invaded. They, especially we don't alligators. We any others, but... <laughs> Su- Susan, like, is, like, climbing on this ladder and it oh, breaks God. and she almost falls... And they cut to this stock footage of clearly a baby alligator. It is, it is an old baby. It is. I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb and say, that's not just like stock footage, like, uh, that was all they could get. No, Susan's just really afraid of this baby <laughs> alligator because it's Susan. Because something moved and it scared her. It's like half a foot long at most. It's so it's cute. adorable. <laughs> I just want Carter. But then the guy, a guy pops into the sewers that I don't know his name. This is the guy that they were going to meet. 
Yeah, what's his name though? Told me his name. I don't like, know. Five seconds ago. Not the no, 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 actually, guy. no, no, no. The, the, okay. the dude pops down in the sewers and shoots the alligator. And there's also like, oh, by the way, I found the doctor and I brought him. He'll be in the next oh, episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember his name. But that's what happens. And but then back with they do meet up with Ashton. They have food. Ashton's a huge dick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they meet... Wait, wait, you're skipping something excellent. Oh, right. They walk into the thing. There's, like, this weird, weird fucking creature just hanging out. The slither. The slither. And, like, they don't notice it. They just walk right by it. It's, like, Does no one have peripheral vision in this universe? But it's... No. I don't... It's, like, this guy in a giant bag with, like, shaky hands. (laughs) I think it has, like, claws. I think there are tentacles involved somewhere. Yeah, it's not a very... I mean, it's kind of like a blobish design. Mm -hmm. But with clear hands. (laughs) They go into this thing and they can hear it outside, but they just start eating and stuff, and they're just hanging out. I mean, like, what is that thing out there? Uh, And the Black Marcus is like, it's the Slither, it's the Black Dalek's pet. Which, by the way, the Black Dalek is the 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 leader. uh, leader Which, by the way, they meet Ashton, and it's not, like, readily clear that he's... (laughs) asshole he's bringing food and he's like all right and ian's like hey i heard you can get me out of here and back to london and he's like sure what are you gonna give me how much money do you have what you have you know precious metals you have jewels what is that even valuable anymore like right? is there an economy yeah. Yeah. like you just you you just want them i don't yeah you just do it to be a dick it's of no use to you i don't what do you want? What but, do you want it for? And they get talked and I don't know, and then they just start eating, and then he's like, yeah, I guess I'll take it. Which, by the way, the, yeah. they the guy who's who's and, there, who's been at the mines, like, somehow has something, and he, he's been paying for the food. I'm explaining it because I really like it. I really like him as a character. And he's like, you know, with all the food, like, with all the stuff you keep paying me to bring food into the camp, I would just help you escape. And he's like, I know, but I'm I'm going to get out on my own means. In the meantime, I'm going to help everyone who's mm-hmm. here because that's yeah. more important. And I really like that character. He's very cool. But the, they're feasting, and while they're feasting, the Slither decides it's hungry too yeah. and eats Ashton. <laughs> yeah, he does. He dies, man. And so they're, they're running away. Ian's like, let's get in this tiny thing. They, they get into like a tiny little bucket. And that's that's <laughs> That's the cliffhanger. This isn't like, even the Don't worst time in this no, story. No, and he gets into something. It gets progressively better. He just keeps picking hiding places, and they keep moving, and it just becomes more and more dangerous. <laughs> Basically, he gets in this one, and it's like the Daleks elevator are like, down. Yeah. The Daleks are like, all right, that bucket. Start moving that one down to the center of the earth. <laughs> and you're like, wait, no! And this <laughs> is, uh, we're now in the waking yeah. ally. Mm-hmm. The waking ally. But yeah, the, the, they're in it first, and like, the slither's coming at them. And this is the beginning of the next episode. And the slither just falls. Falls to its yeah. death. Like, why the hell is this slither even in here? You've introduced this weird-ass concept <laughs> that's in it for like, maybe three minutes. Does nothing except eat an asshole. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, I did not realize wanna... what I said until I said it. Do you want to rephrase that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Does nothing except eats a dick. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> eats Ashton. And then falls off a cliff. Liter- that's literally all it does. Yeah, it's like I think a... the only thing it does is to be like, so this is alien and weird, right? <laughs> it's like yeah. such a like big, complex sort of creature design and stuff they do nothing with it it's in the end of one episode in the beginning of the next and that's it mm-hmm. it's a cliffhanger that's yeah it does it's weird it's weird it's like the giant footprint <laughs> yeah it's probably a footprint of a giant no or not <laughs> it's just a really stupid pet that's what this is <laughs> yeah i don't know i like the idea that the daleks are just keeping pets yeah, yeah. but it's never like explored at all it's just Oh, we brought our own pets from home. Like, it's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Slither. He'll eat you. I love him. <laughs> you feed him humans twice a day. Then the bucket starts going down. It goes down forever and ever. And they're like, oh my god, so my long. ear's popping. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I wish, I'm sad that the lighting is so bad here because I feel like, Tony, this is the moment you would give. Is Ian just popping his ears and like shaking his head all cute? But the lighting's so bad. <laughs> yeah. They get out of the buckets and then continuing the theme of not being able to walk, the other guy, like, bangs his knee. Yeah, yeah. immediately. Like, that happens so many times. Like, someone twists their ankle, someone hits their knee, someone is in a wheelchair. That is not the same. That is not the same. Yeah, because he moved faster than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The point is, humans are very fragile. So, Barbara... 
and Jenny find shelter. They go to this house. It may have been kind of late at night at this point, because the first time I watched this, I thought nothing of it. But the second time I watched it, when, like, the mother is there, all I saw was Carol Kane as the witch in, uh, well, not the witch, the wife in Princess Bride. And all all I'm thinking in my head is, I'm not a witch, I'm your wife. (laughs) I couldn't stop laughing. So my notes say, a witch and her daughter with terrible hair sell out Barbara and Jenny for, like, Three cans of food. Like, they get nothing out of this deal. No, yeah. pretty much nothing. Although they I do, do like... give some of the food... They give some of the food they already had to Barbara and Jenny. Yeah, it's... Doesn't make sense. <laughs> I also don't understand why the Daleks are just allowing them to live there. Like, they know they're there. They're making deals with them. But well, we're just gonna let you stay? They said that they make clothes for the prisoners. And the Daleks yeah. are like, I guess you need to not be naked to, in order to mine stuff for us. And we don't know anything about it. And Maybe. these people will turn people in and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's, they're just more useful alive. Yeah. The real point of this was to show that not all humanity is on the same side. Yeah. That there are some mm. people that are just out for themselves, and they will sell you out to the Daleks. Um, yeah. For a can of beans. Yeah. Actually, I think it was a can of peaches. Which, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Peaches, okay. Okay, well, it was peaches? Oh, now I'm totally on board. <laughs> right. I'm like, they did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is worth a human life. Could you imagine what you would do for, like, a strawberry in, like, a post-apocalyptic world? Is that not a thing on Firefly? Fly? Yes! <laughs> and, it was, and I was like, yeah, strawberries. That looks delicious. <laughs> And then uh, we go back to the mines. Ian is a mine expert. Why not? <laughs> they try to join in the basket carriers, but pretty quickly get found out. It's the one guy's brother. And then Larry's brother. Larry's it's very brother. sad. It's very sad. Oh my it's his god, brother, it is so dramatic. But his brother is a robo guy. <laughs> yeah. His brother's a robo man. He tries to talk to him and he's like, don't you remember me? Don't, don't you, you remember, remember your, your wife? wife? And he just doesn't. No, and there's and, like there's that kind of like pause where he's like, He's gonna remember, right? He's gonna remember. And he's like, no, 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 not today. And like, the guy like throws himself on his brother and is like yelling at Ian to run. This is like a really dramatic moment. Like he's like trying to get Ian out of here, but he's also like, this is all I came down here for. Like my life is over. Yeah. So he starts to strangle the Robo Man brother while the Robo Man brother is shooting him, and they kill each other. They die in each other's arms. Oh, it's 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 brutal. It is. So sad. Ooh. And then we have a fish fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We come from that to uh, to Susan and, and David, David flirting. This is super which is cute. the weirdest <laughs> flirting ritual I've ever witnessed. <laughs> I would kill someone if they did that. Right. Basically, David comes out and he was like fishing in the river or something, and Susan's you know, I don't know who cares. And, <laughs> and he comes up and he like puts the fish on her face. And she starts screaming. Because it's Susan. Yes. <gasps> but then, I, I called but it. Then... I was like, she is about to scream. It's her catchphrase. Here it oh, comes. Yeah. But then they start, like, play wrestling. And I'm like, oh, this is going to go somewhere really fast. But then it, then they stop. And it becomes this very sweet moment. Where, like, is it because, like, the doctor walks in? Well, no. It, they're going to kiss. And, like, they're, like, an inch away from each other. And all of a sudden, the doctor walks up. And David just pulls away in the most dramatic fashion possible. <laughs> like, he completely throws himself across the room. I've it's been wonderful. There. <laughs> Where you're like, we were doing nothing. We and were then, both and then sitting the on whole... opposite sides of the couch the whole time before yeah. you walked in. <laughs> and then it's this whole act natural. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite tropes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The doctor totally knows what's going on. No, yeah, he does. He he sees it. He sees what's happening. He he's, and he's it. like, well, this is better than the last time that she was just like all gaga for sensorites. Back in the, the mines, Ian spies Barbara being a slave miner. And then Barbara's like, I'm going to talk to the Daleks and get us out of here. And what then like, do we do without Barbara? Right? And she die. convinces. She just can die. She's like, Dalek, I got important information. I need to tell it now to one of your leaders. Take me to your leader. She doesn't say that. I mean, that's the gist of what no, she yes, says. Yes, it is. And he keeps pushing back, so she just keeps making up stuff until they take her there. Yeah, yeah. he's like, well, you can't talk to the black doll. Like, he's important. And she's like, you don't understand. I can't explain it to you. It's uh, it's, it's immediate. We need to go right now. You need to act on this information. And the Dalek's like, okay, I guess I'll listen to you. <laughs> and then this is when we learn the, the Dalek's plan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and there's this bomb that they're going to drop. Like, to blow. to blow the core, I guess. I don't know. That's and, a really bad idea, by the way. And Ian's, <laughs> no, like, following. Helpful. And, like, 
the Daleks are coming and he jumps inside of this little, tiny little oh compartment to hide. It's like a two-piece thing and it comes together and it's the fucking bomb. <laughs> Ian and Ian has is been inside. inside the bomb. It is the worst hiding place he has chosen yet. And, that's and the- it's amazing. And Every he- hiding place has led to this. Has led to this, where he has literally gotten himself in the middle of a bomb. I cannot stress in- enough how bad an idea that is. <laughs> no, but it gets worse, because then they start dropping the bomb down a tunnel. <laughs> that, and this is the end of The Waking Ally, and now we're on to the last episode, which is Flashpoint. So much happens in this episode. No, a like, lot happens. Like, yeah. everything, really. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what happens. Like, the Robo people are trying to pull the bomb back up for some reason. Well, Ian kind of messes it up. He's, like, pulling out wires, wires and stuff and inside. Yeah, he's inside the bomb, and for some reason there's just enough room for him to be in. Which, there's not important bomb parts taking up no, all that it's, space. it's very poorly made. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible bomb. Yeah, there's a bunch of wires inside, and Ian's just like, well, I don't he's know. He's just, just stuff. Like, yeah. And the bottom opens. Like, there's a door in the bottom. There's a trap door in the bottom of the bomb. It was yeah. really weird, too, because it just, like, pans down to his crotch. And, and I'm you're like, like why, why are we Why? <laughs> Why what is going here? on? And it's like there for a couple seconds, and then the bottom drops out. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought they were pleasing the fans. I <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of fan service for you. So he pulls on a bunch of wires, the bottom drops out, and I guess he's still not like at the end of the tube that it's going down, so he falls quite a ways. No, he they start pulling it back up, and he's like holding on to the rope. And getting pulled up at the same time, and then there's some, like, door off the tunnel or something? Like, he gets yeah. out right at the very end, at the top of the tunnel. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Just good, because otherwise he'd be in the Earth's core. <laughs> otherwise he would have fallen all the way down. But he does there's fall, a, There's right? a, um... Yeah, but not, like, like too but, far. Yeah, and he, like, hits He falls and he tumbles down, but he, mm-hmm. like, falls out, like, a side... Shoot? Which yeah. makes no sense. And there's these giant, like, <laughs> It's a logs. runoff drain. There's logs there for no reason. I was trying, when he started doing it, I was like, what the hell is that? What you is know what I doing? bet it was? I bet it was, like, things to prop up the caves, the, like, tunnels. I sure. bet it was, like, braces for the tunnels. Oh! That makes more sense than the actual cereal. So we'll take okay. we'll okay. some of that. <laughs> but he uses them to kind of, like, block the tunnel so the bomb cannot be dropped down. And then we go back to Barbara stalling. Which is great. Oh, it's other, excellent. Other than the, scene. like, slight, like, racist moment. But other than that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was not That great. happened. That happened. But, like, before I was saying, before I were running over, the, like, that was my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Because she basically gets in to see the main Dalek. And she's like, look, I have these schematics. There's going to be this huge plan. Don't you know anything about it? And she just starts making well, shit up. Well, she's, she's not She's like, make- it's about the bomb. Like, no, no, we know about the bomb. We don't care. She goes, okay. So she just starts going off and using all of her history knowledge of wars and just throwing in different things. Like, Listen here, we've got Custer. General Lee and yeah. Custer and I think General Patton's in there somewhere. And it's just beautiful. Like, none of it makes any sense. No. Historically, she's but they're stalling. all really great points in history yeah. in wars, and like you know that she's really good at her job. Unlike Ian, <laughs> <laughs> I love can't Ian, tell but if every time, alive or dead. every yeah. time he's like, "Yeah, science. This is Ian's moment to shine." He's always like, "Well, that's a little bit advanced for me." And it's like, yeah. Ian, come on now. Like Planet of the Giants, he's like, "Oh, litmus paper." <laughs> yes. But then, like two seconds later, there's all these formulas for chemicals. He's like. Well, I don't know, Doctor. What do you think it is? <laughs> this, like, Barbara, she's in there, surrounded by all the, like, top Daleks. The black Dalek is in there, and she completely takes command of the room. Yeah, Everyone yeah. listens to her. And she almost, like, wraps up the episode right then. Yeah. This isn't, so she's, like, she's, like in like, the runs. command center, and there's the thing that sends the uh, messages, messages to, to the, the Robo-Man. The robo It's really low, actually. It's, like, almost on the floor. Like, a Dalek could not reach that. <laughs> But she comes, like, she runs to it, and she's, like, shouting into it. And she no, almost... no, she's not, she's not shouting. She's, oh, no, wait, yes, you're yeah. right, she's No, shouting. that happens That's later. Next. <laughs> but, she, yeah, she gets caught before she can... Her and getting, Jenny. Yeah, her and Jenny. Why, why is Jenny... Jenny because Jenny was she's there. following Bard and the Earth. Okay. But the good part about this or is the, that they put them in these, like, the neck stocks, which are exactly at the same heights as Barbara and Jenny, even though they're completely different heights. They're permanently installed. Well, no, I don't it's think they just... are. I think they're magnets. Yeah, but there's like, it's a tiny slot in the wall. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's like bolted into the wall, pretty much. It's there. Because in like, my They head... were prepared for this. They knew <laughs> they two knew. of these heights would show up. I just assumed that they were like, met, because they're, they're like little metal strips that go around their necks. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't, I mean, I didn't look at it very hard, so I believe you guys. <laughs> 
But like when I what I saw, I just assumed that they were like really strong magnets okay. that were like pulled. That would make more sense, right? That's like yeah. a good design. But what but I don't I... understand is like, why would you not just kill them on the spot? Why are we gonna imprison them in like the main control room? Because Daleks are kind of lazy when it comes to exterminating. Like there yeah. are so many times where it's like we should exterminate him, and another Dalek's like, no, hang on a second, I want to do some shit first, and it's like. But I wonder if there's, like, can we kill him? A certain job for Dalek. Like, this is the executioner Dalek. <laughs> right? And it's, like, it's like a low job. It's, like, beneath yeah. them. So the people in command, like, they don't get their hands dirty. Right. Or their little... Yeah, they, they don't get their plungers dirty. And that's the noise it makes. But the doctor goes down, pretty much immediately saves Barbara after this happens. Basically. Yeah, which by the way, the doctor helps Barbara out of her little net thing, and then like in the next scene, Jenny's just standing there, and it's like no one helps her. <laughs> it's not even the next scene; it's the same. It's the scene. same scene. Do, she just walks not... into the shot later, and it's like, who how did you get out? We saw everybody in shot. It was the doctor, and it was the leader of the rebels, mm-hmm. and that was it. That was it. And somehow she just like walks off, and it's like, Those were oh, very I am good. fine now. Yeah, I escaped somehow. <laughs> This is also immediately after the Dalek looks directly at the doctor and does oh, nothing. right. Yes. yes. That's what they're in there and, you know, hiding and they're hiding. They're pressed up against the wall. Just right at him. That was close. Keeps moving. <laughs> they decide to mess with the frequency. This is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best part. So there's this, like, microphone that controls the Robomen and Barbara's like, you know, we can use that to control them. Yeah. Let's go give them new directions. So she and the doctor go over to do it, but Barbara's like, no, 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 we have to sound like Daleks. We have to, or it won't work. <laughs> Which the doctor doesn't even do. No. It's just Barbara, and she's there going, destroy the Walmart. <laughs> no, the Daleks. Destroy, destroy the, the Daleks. Daleks. And the doctor's like, I, I want to do it, and like pushes her out of the way, and Barbara's like, you, like, stop. <laughs> like, I had this. Hey, what are you doing? That was great. But I loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> Kill the Daleks. Destroy the Daleks. <laughs> and it works. Like, they overthrow them almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like people And that's when, and... by the way, this is where we get to the point where people are just sort of pushing them around. There's a <laughs> there's a scene where, like, there's, like, a mob of, of robo-men, and they've, like, have one hoisted in the air, <laughs> and they're carrying it out of the mine and just kind of, like, toss it. There's a lot of destruction. Oh, and, it's, oh, like, yeah. and like, it's, like, such a wide shot, too. Like, you're, like, on top of this, like, mountain looking down into this quarry. Yeah. By the way, first quarry in the Doctor Who... It's a... Quarry? Quarry? How do you it? Quarry? Quarry. Quarry? Okay. <laughs> yeah, looking down, and it's, like, huge shot, and, like, tons of people are running out of this mine, carrying Daleks mm-hmm. and throwing Daleks, and... I mean, you see people, like, beating the crap out of them, and, like, the casing's coming apart, yeah. and it's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, the other thing here is that the bomb that dogs have been using or we're going to use, is actually going to explode now. Yeah, they're but like... it's stuck in the tunnel, and it's going to basically blow up everything. Like, we've got, like, ten minutes to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, we have got to get out. Which I love. I love they're talking about the bomb. I don't remember at what point Ian becomes, like, reunited with everybody. Oh, it's right then, actually. But he, he just kind of in. wanders in. No, he comes in and he goes, Hey, we just revolted. Like, everyone's against the Daleks now. And oh, that was Barbara's awesome. And Barbara's like, yeah, we yeah, did know. that. <laughs> yeah. But it's there to tell you that they were successful. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the point. But I like that Ian's like, oh, I guess that's where the bomb's going to go off, where I uh, jammed it. We should probably get out. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's kind of how that scene goes. And they, they, they get back up to this, like, cliff edge, and they're just hanging out on this cliff edge, and the bomb goes off, and there's so much stock footage of different things, <laughs> cliff sides collapsing and things exploding mm. and mushroom clouds, and they're, like, right on the edge of this tiny little, little spot, and they're perfectly fine. <laughs> Nothing happens. Nothing happens. And then afterwards, I, my favorite part is the doctor's like, the the upshot of the, the explosion caught the saucers, <laughs> no, which we don't see. He's just like, oh, yeah, by the way, that took all, out the saucers. We're fine. All the Daleks are dead because of reasons. That's like the moment in the Super writer's convenient. room where someone's like, don't they still have saucers? Can like, they fly? Fuck. Let's take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> and the explosion caught the saucers. Good. Next. Yep. <laughs> Fixed it. Just have the doctor say it and Ian point. Ian does that twice, points out the UFOs. In case you guys can't see the giant flying saucer, it's right to my right. <laughs> Way to make yourself not conspicuous by pointing right at the thing you're hiding from. <laughs> <laughs> they get back to the TARDIS. Big Ben starts belling it up again. Yeah. It's very exciting for everyone. 
Like, there's noise again. I must be a British. <laughs> no longer Sunday. And uh, <laughs> Su- Su- it's a lot. Like everyone's there, like digging out the TARDIS. Like everyone's okay. Helping. Yeah, we're cool yeah. now. Let's work on other things. And Susan's um, shoe is has a hole in it. <laughs> this <laughs> makes me so mad. Like, I know we're about to get Zero. to, like, one of the most touching, defining moments of this era of Doctor Who, and the thing about the shoe makes me so angry. <laughs> it gets worse, too, actually. It gets worse. Well, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, like, let's talk about this moment, because yeah. well, it is, it is a... before we get to the moment, uh, I, I know I keep doing that, but I want to mention stuff before no, we get right. to the stuff. Let's do it. Um, she has a holder shoe, and the doctor's like, oh, I'm into it, I'll take it. Ian and Barbara are talking to David, and, like... Adorable. Barbara okay. is like, David clearly wants to talk to Susan alone. Yes. And Ian and keeps talking. Like, so tell me about what's going on with you. And like, Barbara's like, fucking Ian. Ian. Shut the like, fuck up. She she hits him on the shoulder. She points at the TARDIS. And he just keeps talking like, tell me about your childhood on the farm. And she literally pulls him away. It's she's just like, beautiful. Ian, we are leaving now. It's a very married moment for them. It is. It's so oh, cute. cute. I love it so much. And then the other guy comes up and he's like, Okay, I want to say goodbye to you, David, but I'm definitely going to get out of your space. He's like, I'm going to shake your hand, and I'm going to leave. Right? Yeah. I know what's up here. I'm getting out of the way. Yeah. And then it's this awkward moment where Susan's like, I want to be alone with you, but I don't want to talk to you right now, so I'm going to look over completely away from you. Yes. And then they have this scene Which about think... staying yeah. stay with me and marry me and... She's 15. 15. Yeah. And that they've been in one, it's one up, one Possibly serial. Possibly 16. Like, let's say, Still. how, how yeah. long of a span of time would you say this serial takes place over? A couple days at the most. Yeah. I, I'd like, be willing to say a week. A week? I would say a week. She hasn't even known him that long. Like, not even for the whole time. No, she's not even mm-hmm. been there. there. Yeah. Yeah, they've barely known each other. And he proposes to her, stay with me, let's rebuild this planet together. We'll start a farm. You can come live with me. Which Susan, well, by the way, is babies. from like an advanced yeah. society, and she's gonna go start a farm. Like to this me, is... I would be like, okay, but do you have Wi-Fi? Like, yeah. you know, and I'm sure there are things like Time Lord things that are like Time Lord mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is the part that really starts to bother me because when she's like, no, I can't, because I've taken care of my grandfather. And David says, I will give you a place, I will give you a time to belong to, and I will give you an identity. I'm like, oh, I wish you didn't say that. Yeah, she's got an identity. Let her figure it out for herself. That's what this arc should have been about. Yeah. Not about, well, we're passing you from one dude to another, and they now both you have make the decision. Okay. Susan doesn't have much say. No. Oh. We just say what happens to her now. Yeah, no. Let's, I mean, the doctor pretty much sees all this going on, sees that she's not going to be able to make a choice between him and David, and he's he like. He doesn't want her to feel like she's obligated to take care of him, so he locks her out of the TARDIS. And here's the part that I said the shoe thing. She take, he takes the shoe and is like. Yes, this is the part where it gets worse. There's, she wore a hole in her shoe just from, you know, stuff. Whatever. And he's like, oh, I'll go fix it. And that's the point where he locks her out of the TARDIS. So she he one leaves shoe. her on Earth with one shoe. He steals her <laughs> shoe. And it makes me so mad. It makes you mad, but I kind of like it because it's like a sentimental thing. Okay, like, but her... Yeah. It is Here's for me. Because he's okay. holding it when it happens. He is holding it and, he's, and he is very, being very sentimental about it. But her whole room of crap is still in the TARDIS. Oh, yeah. Like, I yeah. just says, I have tons of other clothes and shoes. Yeah. So first of all, doesn't even like let her get that crap out of the TARDIS. <laughs> so she has nothing. She has the clothes on her back and a single shoe. In a land that she pretty much knows nothing about. I mean, oh, she's yeah. been on Earth before, but this is Earth in the Very future. Different. She knows what? nothing about farming. She she knows absolutely nothing about farming. She's And she's going to marry a guy she's known for like three days. And, it's, and David is like, you said you wanted like a time to be in. Yeah. Maybe not post-apocalyptic <laughs> Earth. Right. I mean, and then they could go anywhere. Like, he could go with them on the TARDIS. Yes. Yes. It's not an issue of her staying. But David decides this for her, and then the doctor decides this for her. And, like, I would love this send-off if Susan was to say, I want to belong somewhere. I want to belong here. I want to stay with you. But at no point she yes. keeps saying, no, I want to go back on the TARDIS. And both the men in her life say, no, no, you're staying. No, we know mm-hmm. it's right for you. This is what you it's want. Mad. And it, it could, yeah, it could have been a really wonderful, really powerful arc for to have Susan kind of grow. I mean, she's been having this, it's been coming up more and more mm-hmm. of I'm my own person, I have my own ideas, and you keep treating me like a child, and I hate it. 
And it would have been great for her to be like, no, I do have my own ideas. I do have my own desires. And what I want is to stay here. I'm leaving. And that would have been great. Yes. Oh, yeah. That would have been excellent. And it's weird. It, it's kind of weird to me that this is such an iconic moment. Does anyone else feel that way? Or Oh, no, it well, is. The like, doctor's I... speech has some good stuff in it. It's a, but I it's will the... come back someday. <laughs> which, which they reuse that clip in New Who. Do they? Yes. It's very recent. I probably yeah. just love it some point. And he does, I do think he does come back in like some audio stuff or comics mm. or some, some kind of secondary part yeah. of canon. But or... like not on the show. We don't see her again. No. He's like, oh, by the way, here's your clothes. <laughs> right, like at least give the girl her clothes there's nothing in there no one's making I, new clothes in post-apocalyptic earth i will say this is not like totally out of character for the doctor though <laughs> it's sometimes the doctor's like i know what's best i'm gonna yeah. do this yeah. that is totally in character for the doctor and here's the part that i was gonna say earlier that why i have like opinions about it is that apparently part of the reason why she left the, the actress left they weren't letting her develop her character at all i, I really what? like parts of who susan is and i really i don't think she was acted poorly i think she was written poorly if that makes sense oh yeah right. like when susan's given stuff to do she's excellent but, but the problem is most of the time all that they do is have her scream Yes. That's it. It's all kind of wrapped up in this kind of gross thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's the gender politics of the 60s. Yeah, but it's still... This show is actually, I feel like, does a lot of like pretty cool things about oh, that. Yeah. Like, Barbara takes control a lot. It's amazing. And they even set up this idea of Susan coming into her own mm -hmm. just to completely drop the ball at the yeah. end. Yeah, it's... It's there. It's being it's being built up to this moment, and then it's it's not her own choice. And it's like, mm -hmm. why would you do that? Why would you build up to mm -hmm. it? They could have taken care of that in one line, yeah. and they didn't. I mean, the line that the doctor says about her being a woman now and stuff, that was <laughs> weird. I mean, if you had Susan saying it yes. instead of the doctor, that would have been great. That would have been like, yes. doctor, I'm not, I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm a woman. I'm going to make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. I want to stay here and help out and do that and blah, 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 blah. That would have been great. Just move everything for the doctor over to Susan. Yeah. Perfect. Well, and someone said that, like, he could go with her and there's no reason why he can't. David can't go on She suggests it. He's like, no, no, this is my time. I belong here. I'm staying. I mean, I think part of the reason why, I mean, what is meant to be written there and it's mm -hmm. not is that Susan is looking for a place to belong. And so if yeah. she goes, if they both go back on the TARDIS, she still doesn't really have a time right. that she belongs to. But, again, again it, should be, her it should be her. Yeah. Like I said, I think it's kind of weird that it is so iconic, I guess. This Even is if, the first time one of the original companions has left. I mean, I guess that's what it is. It's, it's such a big moment. Yeah, it's weird because you would have expected it to be Ian and Barbara before it would be the yeah. doctor's granddaughter. Yeah, because she's kind of your into the show the first right, time Right, we around. start with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the one that brings in Ian and Barbara. Yeah. But, like, if this was New Who, this would be the season finale. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, like, episode two. It's very early. But it was mostly her wanting out i feel like yeah from what i've read i don't blame her but yeah and it just like not only it being the doctor's choice and everything it's also like he left her in a post-apocalyptic world with one shoe. with one shoe with one shoe you could not have it's given so the girl her God. shoe <laughs> I'm sure she got more shoes. Okay, but uh, here's the thing. Well, no, there was the one witch that was making clothes for everyone. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the Daleks were literally keeping her alive because she's the only person who knew how to make clothes. Like, give well, the girl some Ash, luggage. Okay, but, but Ashen said there's entire cities that are fine. Did the, he? Yeah, the black market guy. He said there's that's why he's getting all the food from and stuff. He's like, there's, told, there's mm -hmm. cities that the Daleks haven't even touched. I do like yeah. that. Because, you know, there's like, I've read a couple of things about like people reading like post-apocalyptic stories. Oh, yeah, like, what's going on over in Scotland? It's yeah. just America going to shit. Yeah, like, is everyone else okay? And, and yeah. like, I do kind of like the idea that they're like, yeah, everyone is okay, and no, no one's helping out. It's just the, the Daleks have yeah. left them alone, and no one else is, is helping us out because the Daleks are scary. Like, yeah. <laughs> which rings, you know, true to life. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Wrap it up. Um, well, yeah, what do you think of, like, the serial as a whole? It was really strong. Like I said, I just really enjoyed the on-location shooting really helped it out a lot. Ian getting into progressively worse tiny spaces is amazing. I want a robo hat, like a robo guy hat so bad. Like if someone can figure out for me how to make one and help me make one, I want one more than anything. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall it was it was pretty solid and it's I feel like at the end of it I was really sad to see Susan go. Like, I've talked before in podcasts about how she's kind of annoying, she screams too much, and I feel like, you know, 
that's kind of a general, that's how people feel about Susan. But at the, the end of this episode, you're like, no, Susan's gone. Oh, no. And it's, it's very sad. And it's a nice moment. I agree. Uh, I think uh, all in all, it was great. It seemed a lot bigger. It didn't stumble very much other than this slither thing, which I think was entirely pointless. It was just like, we have to have a cool new creature in here. And it was dumb. But all in all, I thought it was great. The drama was really good. It looked great. I like the arts of everybody, and I do feel like they dropped the ball with Susan. But they could have been so good. Yeah. But still, it's a good it's a good serial. I do feel all like all. we get what we wanted kind of with Martha, the way Martha leaves. Yeah. Yeah. That I always really res- like. I was kind of, Martha wasn't like my, my favorite companion ever. Well, I don't know why. She was awesome. She was great. I just like other companions better is all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like when she makes the decision to get out, it's kind of when I was like sold on her, you know, yeah. I was like good for you. That is the right choice for you. And I am proud of you. And I am glad that we kind of have that mm-hmm. moment. You know what I'm thinking? It's it's weird. Like the uh, the 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 finale where the Daleks do steal the Earth. That's another. I've actually seen people like grumpy about how the end of that. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> the Doctor like wipes Donna's memory and like she's like, don't no 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 don't do it. And then he does it anyway because he knows what's best. Aww. And I've seen people complain about that. Whereas I feel like sure he did take Susan's choice away in this serial. But Donna was gonna fucking die. I think yeah. he's okay to do that. Because I've seen people like, she said no, he should have respected but that. But she did say no. She did say no, but she was gonna die. But she I would rather her not no. die. We're gonna have a whole other podcast now about Donna Noble. Let's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry. I'm sorry. I won't say anymore. I just want to say... Well, I do want to say... Um, because it, it's, it's something that I kind of thought about with the, the Robo-Men. Basically, Barbara convincing all the Robo-Men to kill the Daleks, which is kind of something similar that happens... Close your ears. Okay, uh... Um, <laughs> uh, which is some, kind of something that similar that happens with the silence. Which, of course, is uh, yeah. a little bit different because the Robo-Men have already been, like, they're just gonna go crazy and die anyway. They're and they're not... really going back against their oppressors. Yeah, they're not really people anymore, I guess. There's not much of humanity left in them, but that yeah. is a parallel that I, I have to in this edit this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that actually. I just thought of it just now. <laughs> yeah, I can it's it's kind of similar, but not as a, it, it doesn't seem as bad because we've already established that the Robo Men do not remember their lives. They've kind of lost their humanity. They don't have feelings anymore. And if so they the, do, they'll just kind of go crazy and die. Yeah, so they become collateral damage. Which but it saves sucks. the human race. Yeah. So yeah. it's your turn. To say your um, final thoughts. I really liked this. I feel like it may have gone on too long in mm. some points, which is a problem with it's Classic Who. Par for the course, it's yeah. Just there. I feel like this should be a Susan episode for me because it's her last one and the ending is very much about her. But to me, it's all about Barbara. <laughs> I just love Barbara and she gets some really great scenes here where she just takes control. Yeah, I, I like it. I like having the Daleks back, but it's the first time we really get people that we recognize <laughs> and we have a good villain and it kind of builds up the tension there are definitely some parts where the writing makes no sense at all okay there's sure so, there's so often that i'm just like yeah all right yeah we just say accept that. it yeah you know saying saying that it would have been nice if they'd given all of the barbara stuff to susan like have yeah. her take control like yeah this here's how we take out mm-hmm. the robo man or this is how, like, just driving through the Dalek. Yeah, and that way you would set, do. That just would her... set up, like, really hardcore that, like, she can, like, be fine in this environment. But She's, even like, not with that, control. if she would have yeah. just done anything, anything with the Resistance, like, if she could have escaped from that alligator by herself. Like, yeah. she barely gets out of the way of the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that watching this episode, it's kind of clear that, like, yeah, this is why the Daleks stick around for so long. This is mm-hmm. why they're the kind of iconic enemy. Because you watch this episode and they're terrible. Oh, I remembered something that I really enjoyed. Yes, mm-hmm. go ahead. There's a moment where like they first get to the resistance. You can edit this into that part if it makes <laughs> you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moment where they first meet the Resistance, or the Resistance are listening to, like, a broadcast from the mm. Daleks. And I remember first that I told you, I was like, God, no wonder why that one guy killed himself. Could you imagine having a list of Dalek broadcasts, like, <laughs> all day long? Like, <laughs> that's awful. But he turns off the broadcast and is like, they're making fun of him. They're, like, poking fun at him. And they're like, yeah, we'll listen to you dustbin overlords kind oh, of yes. thing. 
And it's like, yeah, they're poking fun at them. That's that's cool. <laughs> I it's enjoy only their that. Second second appearance. Yeah, I don't know. I like when the show. I like. I mean, and it's it's very much the like you know what a resistance would do, but yeah, it is also making moments. yeah, but it is also making fun of like a design of something that you created, <laughs> which I enjoyed. So that was the Dalek invasion of Earth. Next we have. A two-parter. The rescue. I don't remember it at all. Tune in next time when we ramble on about the rescue on the Watchathon of Rassilon!